Hello, today I will be travelling with Brittany Ferries Economie from Portsmouth to Le Havre and then returning tomorrow from Dieppe to New Haven with DFDS Transmanche Ferries. Now, oh, excuse me, that's a text message. Oh! On the day I was due to sail, the Brittany Ferries sailing was cancelled due to industrial action. Despite both crossings being on the same Caravan and Motorhome Club booking, I was not entitled to a refund on my return DFDS crossing, even though I now couldn't make it. Therefore, I booked myself a crossing from Dover to Dunkirk so I could at least cover this return leg of the trip for this video. If you want to skip straight to the Dieppe to New Haven part of this video, I'll leave a time code in the description below. If you missed my big ferry comparison of the three operators out of Dover, please do check it out, there is again a link below. In that video, DFDS emerged as offering the best customer experience with the nicest ferries. So today I'm sailing DFDS from Dover to Dunkirk, but I'm not spending the supplement on the premium lounge, which has recently increased to £14, because on my previous crossing it was anything but premium. As you can see, at 7am on a wet Wednesday in March, there are no queues at French Immigration or at the DFDS check-in. The agent who checked me in was once again friendly, chatty and helpful. The same industrial action that saw my Brittany ferry cancelled also saw the Calais ferries disrupted on the day of filming. And I wonder if this was the reason that our Dunkirk sailing left from a different berth to the one that we were queuing at, but at least it was due to be on time. Despite the last minute change of berth, boarding was smooth. So once again we're aboard the Delft Seaways, registered in Dover, flying under the UK flag, but all three vessels on the Dunkirk route are pretty much identical. Morning. To see so many crew on hand around the vessel during boarding Morning. and to be greeted by so many of them really got my trip off to a great start. Once again the ship was smart, modern, stylish and immaculate. My only criticism of the vessel is that there appeared to be no power sockets available for people wishing to charge devices or use laptops. Late running Calais ferries delayed our departure and it also meant that we had to leave the harbour by the western entrance which added to the crossing time. Instead of the £14 on a premium lounge ticket I decided to spend £11.95 on a cooked breakfast. The woman who served me deserves a medal for outstanding customer service. She could not have been more lovely Hello, and helpful. Did you do a vegan breakfast? Yes, I am. Oh, what have you got? Oh. This is a uh, Belgian sausage. Yeah. When you're travelling on your own and you are tired and possibly anxious, to be taken care of like this means the world. There was a good selection of plant-based cooked food available, I chose not to take the grilled tomato and wish I'd asked for a second hash brown instead, as I'm sure I'd have been given one. The breakfast itself was tasty, but it pains me to say that the baked beans were lukewarm at best, practically cold, and the toast was a bit soggy where it had been held under the heat lamps. But the meal was edible and the veggie sausages were tasty. Do remember that the food offering on P&O is dire, and Irish ferries didn't have veggie sausages when I last travelled three months ago, and their breakfast was more expensive. Despite a heavy swell in the channel, you can see that the vessel is incredibly well stabilised. A quick browse around the duty-free shop confirmed that DFDS's duty-free prices are still super competitive. Coffee next, and once again it was an absolute delight to enjoy a five-minute chat with the friendly man who served me at the Lighthouse Cafe. 
But once again, the beverage itself was substandard. For a start, if you take a milk alternative, you can't have anything like a latte, you can only have an Americano with soya milk from an individual plastic portion. I asked for decaf and the coffee itself was weak and watery. I'd give it 2 out of 10. I'm sure that a fully caffeinated milk-based coffee would have been infinitely better. Given the knock-on delays in Dover, we arrived in Dunkirk about half an hour late. Despite the cold beans and watery coffee, my experience aboard the Delft Seaways was overwhelmingly positive, partly because of the clean and comfortable vessel, but mostly down to the friendly and courteous way I was treated by the crew. It makes me glad that I pay for my own ticket. Despite being offered free tickets by DFDS after my previous video, I quietly pay my way to ensure that the crew are not briefed that there is a journalist on board. Therefore, I know that the friendliness and professionalism of the crew is genuine. It is not staged. Given our delay and the threat of further industrial action, I was anxious to get to Dieppe in plenty of time, just in case there were any queues or blockades. I drove non-stop except for one 10 minute break to zap the car while I visited the loo. By the time I'd arrived at the ferry port at 2.55pm, two hours ahead of my 5pm ferry, I was starving. As you can see, I arrived to find three lanes of traffic and all the gates closed. There is one green arrow lit, but the queue is already back to the approach roundabout. Check-in opened two hours before departure with just one booth opening, with nobody managing the queue, which became a stressful free-for-all. To add to the inefficiency of the setup, the immigration booth is directly next to the check-in booth, so any long motorhome or car towing a trailer or caravan completely blocks the check-in while the occupant's passports are being processed. At check-in, the agent was more interested in chatting to his mate who was in the booth with him than explaining anything to me. I'd booked a cabin and at check-in I was given a ticket with a barcode. I assumed this would be scanned by a smart lock on the cabin door. I later found this out to be wrong. There are no facilities whatsoever for motorists waiting in the lanes. Boarding started with motorhomes and freight one hour before departure and it was a very long and drawn out process. Cars started boarding about 40 minutes later. Today we are taking the 4 hour and 30 minute sailing from Dieppe to New Haven aboard the MV Seven Sisters, operated by DFDS in partnership with Transmanche Ferries. The vessel was built in 2006 in Spain with a gross tonnage of 12,000 tonnes. She can carry 600 passengers and a maximum of 227 cars, and sails under the French flag with a French crew. Emerging from the stairway, I was warmly greeted by a friendly and helpful crew member who explained that I needed to collect my cabin key from reception. I am absolutely shattered and I've booked myself a cabin and uh, I'm so pleased I did for the four and a half hour crossing but I am absolutely starving so before I give you a cabin tour first thing first food so it's just there was ravioli tofu is that not available yeah not today not today we just uh, Having had no lunch, I was now very hangry, very hungry and irritable. My delight at seeing tofu ravioli on the menu was quashed when the server told me it wasn't available. Once I'd explained the concept of plant-based eating to him, he really didn't get it that an increasing proportion of the UK population chooses a plant-based diet, I was offered boiled veg, chips and pasta, and that was it. Not even a jacket potato and beans. 
This was quite the contrast to the delicious and filling chickpea tagine that I'd enjoyed on the DFDS Calais ferry and to the extra mile that the crews go to on the DFDS Dunkirk ferry. Suddenly we were back to the 1970s and I was not happy. However, for omnivores the food looked good and in Transmoche Ferry's favour, the meals were very reasonably priced. Fish and chips, spaghetti bolognese and pork chops each came in at £10.50. After my carb overload, let's look around the rest of the vessel. At the after end is this very attractive galleried bar area over two levels. Reclining seat lounges are available on both the port and starboard sides. Bear in mind that the ship has only just returned from a five month layover in Dunkirk, but you can see that little to no money has been spent on smartening her up. The duty free shop is small with a very limited choice, not a patch on the larger Dover ferries, but the prices are at least the same competitive DFDS prices we've come to expect and the selection of attractive gifts from Normandy was a lovely touch. Right, let's give you a cabin tour. Um, yeah, I'm a bit disappointed about what I found out there. So, so this is a four berth outside cabin that I have got for solo use, and I think the uh, I think the word I choose to use is industrial. This pillow is so lumpy. <laughs> you got the you got a clean sheet here, no other bedding here. I've got a towel and yeah these wardrobes so you've got some blankets there not, not quite so savoury um, and you can see you've got fold down bunks over two beds and then you've got an ensuite here with wash basin, um, yeah, there's a shaver point there in the light, mirror for a hello, sorry, and then a toilet and a shower compartment. And I think those of you who watch my videos regularly will know that um, many caravan toilets are actually uh, a bit more luxurious than that. So there you have it, There, here is the cabin and also just be aware that the mains outlet is uh, continental style so remember your adapter right um, I need a nap so I will see you later I was glad that I thought to bring the kettle and mug from the caravan some drinking water and an adapter plug so I could at least enjoy a nice cup of tea in bed Later in the crossing I saw some very clever people walking round with their own pillows. I could soon see why. I tried to nap but the combination of car alarms coupled with announcements such as the cessation of hot food at the restaurant didn't make for a restful experience. To be fair to the ship's company they had made countless announcements before departure literally begging people to switch off their car alarms and there were notices to this effect on the stairwells. They could not have done any more. After watching Amélie for the tenth time on my tablet I left the cabin 30 minutes before arrival as requested. I'm a huge fan of taking a cabin on a longer crossing, but this experience was not a patch on the smart and comfortable experience that I'd had with Stena Line between Harwich and the Hook of Holland. In this case, I think I would have been just as rested if I'd taken a seat in the recliner lounge. We docked in New Haven on time at 8.30, but disembarkation was a very long and drawn out affair. I ended up driving off the ship a full 40 minutes after it had arrived at 10 past 9. Immigration and customs had minimal queues and a big hello to the lovely border force gentleman who stopped me for a chat. 
Exiting the port, I caught a glimpse of those famous golden arches, and I didn't think twice about heading straight for them. So what about the price? Well as per my previous video, I found cheaper fares through the Caravan and Motorhome Club than I did on the operator's own websites. My cancelled overnight sailing from Portsmouth to Le Havre with Brittany Ferries Economie was £191 including an inside cabin which I am promised will be refunded. By comparison, my afternoon sailing from Dieppe to New Haven with DFDS Transmanche ferries was less than half that at £92.25, including an outside cabin. Incidentally, my DFDS crossing from Dover to Dunkirk was £70.20 and was booked the day before travel, which is half the price than booking on the day of travel. To sum up, it appears that DFDS Transmanche Ferries is a low-cost way to cross the channel for the budget conscious. The French crew is professional and I felt safe travelling with them, but the vessel's appearance, the service on board and the food offering are reminiscent of the 1990s. Both ferries we saw in today's video were built in the same year, but it's clear to see that while DFDS has spent a lot of money updating the Delft Seaways, Transmanche Ferries has not with the Seven Sisters. Boarding and disembarkation are long and protracted and the overall four and a half hour crossing will eat at least six hours out of your day. But the overnight crossing isn't long enough to get a decent sleep. If saving money is your priority or you are travelling to a place within an hour of New Haven or Dieppe then DFDS Transmanche Ferries is a solid choice and recommended. However, I would not make a point of going out of my way to use that route again if I have the money for a more comfortable crossing or I'm in a hurry. I look forward to one day travelling with Brittany Ferries when I can check them out for myself and for you, if they really are as good as people say they are. In the meantime, DFDS Dover to Dunkirk would still be my personal first choice. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to see more videos about ferries, do check out my ferry playlist. It's on my channel and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Also, if you like ferry videos, I can recommend the channel by Steve Marsh. He does some great ferry travel reports as well. So again, I will leave a link to Steve's channel in the description below this video. I'd like to say a massive thank you to Ray Goodfellow and Nigel Thornton from the website Dover Ferry Photos. It's been an invaluable source of information to pass on to you about the ferries involved in this video. Do check out their website, again, link in the description below. This production was completely self-financed to ensure impartiality and also to make sure that the experience that I receive in this video will be similar to the one that you receive as a fair paying passenger. Therefore, if you're feeling flush and you found value in this video, do feel free to buy us a coffee. I'll leave a link to my buy me a coffee page in the description below this video. But more importantly, please do share this video with your friends online via social media or on a forum. Also, please do give this video a like and do subscribe to the channel if you don't already. We've got this lovely Adria Altea dart now for the next few weeks, so do stick around and see how we get on with this much bigger caravan and the electric car. Before I go, of course, there are two stars of the show missing. Come, Diggs. Diggle. Okay. Thanks for watching, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. It just leaves me to say from Dougal, from Ted, and from me, thanks for tuning in. There, did you enjoy that? But yeah, I know. Yes, I know. I had to leave you with mum. I know. I know I had to leave you. But you, yes, I know you like. Yes, yes, yes. Dougal, you've got a reputation to protect. That's it. He's given us his back because he never smiles. You smile though, don't you, Ted? Yeah.